Hi everyone, it's great to be here and it's great to talk about the Barcelona story and in uh, times of uh, crisis and disaster capitalism we really need hope so we need a strong political movement that can shape the future and that's why we're here uh, with you today and that's why as cities we are uh, very aware that cities are so important in the future landscape but they cannot do it alone. So we need, really need strong alliances with popular movements, with progressive political movements and with cities in order to succeed. And the Barcelona case, and I'm gonna talk about, I've been nominated by the mayor of Barcelona last year in June to be the chief digital officer, chief technology and innovation officer of Barcelona. And in Barcelona, we are running a bottom-up radical democratic experiment. So the mayor of Barcelona, for who uh, of you doesn't know, she's Ada Colau, she comes from radical popular movement. She was an activist fight against eviction for the right to housing. And then after the Indignados movement in 2011, there was a big societal movement in Spain, anti-austerity and for real democracy. She was elected into government and she created a citizen-wide coalition that is Barcelona in Comun and they ran for, uh, they ran the uh, political election and she was elected into government. She's been defined one of the most radical mayor in the world by the Guardian, we don't know what that means, but we really know that we are running a very strong experiment that is about, first of all, changing government with citizens. So opening up, up government, make it really able to uh, integrate the collective intelligence of citizens, fight corruption, and make sure that governments are not opaque black boxes that don't respond to what citizens need, but really integrating citizens into government. And that's the first thing that's very hard to do, and we can only do through a bottom-up um, approach and to a bottom-up movement. The other thing really I was uh, asked to do in Barcelona is uh, rethink completely the smart city approach. So instead of thinking about smart cities as technology driven, top down, um, privatized cities that, you know, first you think about the technology, you lay sensor network, data, connectivity, you give it in the hands of few global multinational players and then you say, let's put this data there and then only after let's see what kind of problems we can solve to completely revert the approach and start from what are real citizen problems, what cities have to solve, how, and then maybe through technology see what we can achieve. So the technology become a part of a more political, organizational, citywide process to solve real challenges. And I may, I'm gonna make very clear example about that. So this is the digital transformation and digital plan roadmap that we have in Barcelona. It has been built with uh, citizens, so through a collaborative approach. Uh, we have a digital platform in Barcelona, it's called Decid in Barcelona, a democratic platform. Over 40,000 citizens were engaged to build a citizen government agenda. And basically it's a, it's a big plan, it's a big transformation, uh, digital transformation plan. And our hypothesis is there cannot be digital revolution without a democratic revolution. So you cannot talk about the smart city in a different way than really engaging the cities, the government itself, then the city ecosystem, so the innovators, very bottom up, you know, people that are changing the economy, people that are making social impact, get them on board and redefining economic, economic model of the future. And then finally, a strong focus on empowerment of citizens that goes through education, future of work, uh, basic income schemes, and, uh, and a new approach to really empowering and social inclusion. So uh, this is uh, for us like the target of how we work technology, use technology, and this is I think experimental agenda for cities is what if technology really served the people? How can we design technologies at city scale, so large scale infrastructure also, that can transform public services, transform the city, but is designed with ethics, with uh, privacy in mind, but in particular with, for social impact, for social engagement and social impact. So instead of starting from the technology, we start from the big challenges that we have. For instance, in Barcelona, we are working for affordable housing. So we have a big social housing scheme. 
And we have been reclaiming, we have been able to find big banks that leave apartments empty and reclaim over 500 apartments for social housing. And we have a collaborative process where citizens are involved in deciding how we can have this social housing plan. And that's why we also have a big confrontation with companies and platforms like Airbnb, which business model goes against affordable housing in a sense that in Barcelona we had an increase of almost 60% of short-term rentals in the last three years. So citizens are expelled from the city center and they cannot afford anymore to, to own and, and, and rent their house. Another, of course, big emphasis is healthcare and improving healthcare and education through technology. So using open technology uh, in order to empower schools and, and hospitals, and we're working on that. Sustainable mobility. Barcelona has a big plan, uh, which is called Superblocks. You may have heard about it, which is a big a participatory planning process to give more public space to the citizens. So we are creating blocks where uh, cars cannot enter. They're only for pedestrians. And and, and we have done that through a series of assemblies, decision making, uh, bottom up with citizens in order to create some space where citizens are thinking, what can we do there? And this is space that is liberated by car. Energy transition, of course, a big issue in cities, and we are focusing on that, creating an energy municipal operator for um, renewable energy, and this is going to be coupled with distributed smart grid uh, and technology that gives control of the production of energy to the citizens themselves. And then, of course, reduce CO2 emission, which is the big challenge that we're all facing against climate change. So this is where we're starting. We are starting from this is the political agenda that we have. And then we are thinking, what kind of technologies do we need in order to achieve this and to change the city uh, with the citizens? So this is the uh, smart city uh, from the bottom-up approach that we're following so that the smart city is not just, you know, Cisco, IBM, Siemens, Google, Facebook, dropping their technology and locking in the cities, but is also becoming how we can integrate all the different collaborative and bottom-up technologies in order to then reinforce the one that works and scale them at city level because they can become the next generation public services that we need to improve education, health, mobility, and all the big issues that I mentioned before. So we're also doing a lot of things to rethink government. And rethinking government starts, first of all, we are doing a big fight against corruption. Of course, we should have zero tolerance to corruption. And for this, we are implying lots of technology I will show you later on that allows citizens to show how their money is spent and budget is spent and allows citizens to participate more. But also how we can create a framework for government to do open source and agile digital transformation. So one big thing is open source migration. That's what we are doing, creating a framework where you start changing the technologies in government. So I'm a believer that if we spend citizen money for technology, it has to be open source. It has to be um, with operating with open licensing so it can be reused and citizens can see how it's work and we are publishing all the code on GitHub right now. Then we are deploying open standards because it's very important for interoperability. And the more we are talking about smart city, which is urban technology, you know, so it means you're managing water, transportation, energy networks, you start managing all the flows and infrastructure, urban infrastructure of the city, it's very important that we deploy open technology not to have lock-ins and not to depend on single providers for many, many years that would determine also who is controlling the services of the city. So this is very important, opening up the architecture of the city. And our main architecture, even sensor platforms and big data lakes are open standards now. Uh, a big part of this is how do we change procurement? So you have to take into account that digital transf transformation has very little to do with technology. It is about transforming organization, it is about transforming culture, but it is about also making these structural changes like changing procurement uh, and introducing new standards which set the way that the public administration is buying technology. And also what it means changing procurement is that you can break the hegemony of few players and get all of you, basically, that do social technologies and are rethinking technology to apply for public bids in order to help the city to build the services. So it's a very important thing, not only open source technology, but also changing. This is about changing the mechanics of government 
uh, be able to have new procurement framework. And in Barcelona, we're also introducing clauses, for instance, on sustainability, environmental clauses, gender clauses, and then clauses that allow us in the contracts to say data ethics and data ownership. We have been negotiating two big contracts on telecom uh, operators, so the entire telecom contract, and the mobility contract in Barcelona, where we had negotiated with big companies for a long time to have clauses that mandates public ownership of data and ethics and security by design so that we acknowledge that the data is owned by the citizens. And we're doing that in big contracts. So this is the framework of the digital transformation. We are working together with cities because we think this is a framework that can be reused by other cities around the world to make, to change government. Uh, we are um, stressing a lot that you cannot have a new digital agenda that's for the people if we don't change the social deal on data. So the um, digital economy today is based on data. So data is the oil of the 21st century. But the problem is that all the data we produce is ending up in silos and is being controlled by very few players. So what Susanna Zuboff defines surveillance capitalism. So we have to go away the surveillance capitalist model and build a sustainable economy that's based on data commons. And in Barcelona, we are coming up with a new strategy on data, which is about creating city data commons for a new economy in the digital era to grow, which is made with our values and our standards, which is ethics and responsible, that mandates data sovereignty and privacy, and that goes beyond data to create new regime of ownership of, of data. And first of all, and I have to say this government, this doesn't mean building a big brother. This doesn't mean the government own the data. This means the citizens own the data. And the cities can be a custodian, can be a gatekeeper for a new model of data commons instead of data extractivism, which is the economy that we have today. So this is our model. That's what we are building in Barcelona. And the data commons that is going to be data owned by the citizens, we are also implementing very uh, experimental projects that uh, run on blockchain as well, that gives control of data to the citizen. And there is a project that's called Deco that I will explain you. And this is basically what it means to control a city infrastructure, a data, public data infrastructure, where citizens, again, are at the core and own their data. So this is Centillo, is an urban uh, sensor platform of the city of Barcelona. It's all made with open standards and open source. Uh, we record lots of data about energy monitoring, uh, noise, water. Uh, we are doing a lot to improve the efficiency of the city. Garbage collection, and we have like dynamic parking um, system. And then all this data, which is aggregated privacy and ethics by design, of course, we have a big data portal where now we have APIs, which are very well specified for developers that can build on top of this data and help us creating next generation services. Uh, we're also implementing open and participatory budgeting, and that's where um, radical direct democracy online can make a difference. And in Paris, we'll be working together with the city of Paris, of course, on this kind of initiatives. Um, and in Barcelona, we are running now experiments at neighborhood level and working with other Spanish cities to scale this program where citizens get to say what, how they want to spend public money. But in particular, they have transparency on how public money is really spent and used in the city hall. We're also the first city that has experimented. A, we have a whistleblower infrastructure, an enc encrypted architecture based on Tor. We have been developed this project together with Xnet, which is a digital activist group, very active in Spain. And now we have integrated this whistleblower platform within the main city platform and city architecture. And for us, it's very important to say to all the public workers and all the citizens, you have to denounce cases of corruption. We are open to that, and we are working together through this um, infrastructure that protects privacy and protects sources to be able to then tackle corruption better. And finally, all this data should be used for public use, meaning all this data should help 
all of us to improve city, to improve decision making, to improve the services, to improve the way we run public services so that we can create the next generation Uber. We don't need to wait for the big companies to come there and take over transport. We can create, on top of all these data commons, the next generation collaborative economy architecture and projects that we need. And that's why now we are creating a mayor's office for data analytics to do that uh, together with the city ecosystem. This is the project I talked about you before. We are doing this with a big consortium in, uh, in uh, Europe, has been funded by the European Commission. Go have a look, uh, the Decode project. We are gonna run experiments together with Amsterdam on uh, direct democracy and the collaborative economy. And we have very interesting communities now uh, working like the Making Sense community, here is Mara, working on, uh, uh, with us to create this kind of system and just using blockchain to decentralize the management of data, but mainly using uh, encryption uh, to protect uh, privacy of people. So we need basically to create alternatives to the platform uh, capitalism, to the, pla the big platforms that are coming in and taking the market. I mean, this has been a mantra here. I'm hearing it all over the place. Uh, what are the alternatives to algorithmic institution that we have today that are very powerful, that own a lot of our data, and they are black boxes, meaning there is no algorithmic transparency, there is no democracy in the way that this platform are owned and our data and information is owned. So clearly this is very important because we need to create the future economy. So we need to own this kind of infrastructure and technologies. And I have to say, cities have been at the frontier of being very creative, not only in regulating these platforms that we are doing. I mean, cities are coming together. Uh, Barcelona is collaborating with uh, Amsterdam, with Berlin, uh, with New York, with Seattle, with Paris, on let's think how we can be smart in regulating these companies. I mean, clearly, sometimes you have hard challenge because they don't pay taxes. They don't really obey to local regulation. They have a very bad impact on the local economy. And I mean, now we also see that workers are starting striking because the condition of work is really bad. But at the same time, we need to go beyond only regulation. Because even now that the European Commission is starting applying anti-competitive I mean, anti fine to Google, this is very small. So even the rules and the regulation we have right now, they don't work. So we need to go beyond regulation. And of course, first ask these companies to please uh, obey the law as all the other companies. Otherwise, you cannot operate in our cities. But what about going beyond and start funding alternatives? So we are part of a big effort from the European European Commission that has been putting 60 million euros in the last years to fund digital social innovation and platform cooperatives. I mean, from the makers movement to, uh, you know, bottom-up IoT and citizen science to open technology that have a strong uh, social impact. So this is not enough. We have to do more. I mean, we, are, we have to invest public money for future infrastructure of society and also really create alliances, broad alliances, because these are big issues and these companies are of a very large scale. But on the ground and in cities in particular, we can make a difference with this kind of projects, empowering the bottom up, empowering the project that work and make sure that they can scale in cities and they have a place to experiment and be prototyped. So another thing that we are doing is through an urban innovation lab is uh, putting uh, procurement uh, money and using structural regional funds from Europe in order to invest in this new uh, innovation. So we are uh, basically creating all the different uh, experimenting with challenges and prices, uh, but also using this um, innovation procurement in order to invest and bet on the future. Finally, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. So we have the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, the smart city. So this is uh, automating manufacturing. I mean, it's the first uh, industrial revolution where more jobs will be eliminated than creating. So we need to democratize production in the first industrial revolution. And one project that I'm proud of, and I think Thomas will be here uh, talking about later uh, what we are doing in Barcelona, is creating a maker district, which is a district where um, circular economy, 
um, kilometer zero economy, circular economy can be prototyped at scale. And this has been basically also from the city leveraging the power of the maker movement, connect the maker movement with the local artisanal production and also with the big companies that are now investing in uh, fourth industrial revolution and automated manufacturing and try to experiment uh, um, economic uh, production um, that is basically more sustainable and is circular and where you can achieve uh, sovereignty in technology, in food production, in energy production and you can create this kind of urban prototyping for the next generation um, economy. And then Barcelona is uh, becoming a hub of the fourth uh, industrial revolution in the industry 4.0 and we're doing a lot of initiatives that go in this direction. Some are industry initiatives and other are alternative um, things like the Maker Faire and Sonar or the blockchain event that we're hosting. Then there is a big issue that we're all struggling with, which is what is the future of work in the robot economy? So cities have to give answer to this kind of question, because if we don't think about the future of work, if we don't think about the future of education, we cannot be sovereign in the digital age. And so uh, economists are talking a lot about it. How many work will be disrupted? Where this will happen? At what scale? Some economists talk about 100 million workers that will work that will be disappearing in the next few years. And some economists contest this, but still there is a very important debate. And so we are investing in future uh, jobs and skills in the age of automation. So we have, for instance, four public fab labs that we are now connecting with school through an education program where we create, um, well, STEM program, which is about creating the future skills and reinventing work, where work will be very different if non-existent. Another important um, scheme and project that we're running re related to the future of work is basic income experiments. So Barcelona together with other cities, Helsinki has one as well, and also Finland has one at national level, and there are other cities globally which are experimenting on what it means to run basic income schemes. And we are connecting that with experiments in cryptocurrencies and social currency, learning from the complementary currencies movement that have been applied um, throughout Europe to to create new forms of economy. And this is, uh, I think, very promising. And running basic income doesn't mean to destroy the welfare state. Absolutely. And I want to say that clearly because there are basic income schemes that say forget about your uh, welfare benefits and just we give you some cash transfer. No. Basic income for us, it means it's a part of rethinking the welfare state in the digital age and do that not by disempowering the public and what we have, but making the public stronger. And basically, we cannot do all of this, so we cannot do any of the things I talk about if we don't work with citizens. So if we don't do it bottom up, thinking about digital democracy and digital rights. In Barcelona, we have a platform, it's called Decid in Barcelona. It's all open source and we, have, we are doing lots of the policy making with citizens and, and we are engaging, I think, in one of the most radical democratic processes in city right now. Uh, we had a participatory strategic urban planning, so the, the city roadmap was made with the participation of 40,000 citizens. They were looking at the government agenda, that's not very sexy, usually it's only managed by bureaucrats, and they were giving their ideas, debating their ideas online, and proposing new things. 70% of the ideas coming from citizens are part of our government plan right now. And we are also really investing in uh, visualization in the platform, and not just because data should look good, but because visualization is a way for people to understand issues, to learn about it, to exchange knowledge, and then to be very informed when we do online deliberation. So this is a very important part of creating knowledge and not just uh, doing um, online activism in online platforms. So we can build a smart city from the ground up with citizens, and we are doing this experiment in Barcelona, and we are also doing it networked with other cities. Barcelona just hosted a big event, this was called Fearless Cities, which is creating, we are fostering the creation of rebel cities that contest the status quo, but also 
come up with alternative because we need an alternative plan and we need a broad alliance between cities, popular movements, progressive um, political movement to make this work. And this is a first step towards going into creating basically a better future. And these kind of festivals are about prototyping and shaping that future together. Thank you.